Hi guys and welcome to this week's episode of the In The Hub podcast, brought to you by Playbox Technology UK. This week we're speaking to Matt Ash, Regional Manager at Benchmark Broadcast Systems. Matt has more than 30 years of experience in planning and carrying out engineering, systems integration and consultancy services to businesses and multinational media companies across the world. Hope you enjoy. So welcome to the In The Hub podcast. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How about yourself, Ian? Yeah, it's not too bad. Thank you, Matt. Not too bad. Um, and, and, you know, what we usually do, we just get straight into the questions. So if that's all good with you, uh, we'll launch straight into it. Sure, absolutely. Awesome. So uh, welcome to the podcast, obviously, Matt. And, and just for a little bit of background before we do start, how did your career in broadcasting begin? Well, first of all, again, thanks for having me, Neil. It's a pleasure to be here. No problem. My interest in broadcast really began as a kid. Uh, I was always interested in uh, radio and electronics. And in the summer of 1978, I worked all summer sweating my my butt off, mowing lawns and selling newspapers to buy my first computer, uh, Radio Shack TRS-80 Model 1. And during that same time, I was always tinkering around with different uh, radios, different transmitters, and used to have a small AM station that I built uh, from a Radio Shack kit. I'm sure that I was a real pain in the butt for the staff of the local Radio Shack store because I was always hanging around in there and looking at all the new stuff that they've got. But my first real exposure to broadcast was in college at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, where I joined the student radio station. I started off as a jock overnight and worked my way up to the chief engineer spending uh, many long nights down at the station working on different projects, which is probably what led up to me joining the Air Force. Yeah, so there's a bit of that discipline already there, wasn't there, Matt? And, and, and I think it's fair to say you were kind of thrown in at the deep end uh, with, with your start as a, a telecommunication system control uh, in the US Air Force. So what, what do you think is the most invaluable skill that you learned during your time in the Air Force that, that's kind of helped to bring you up to this point? Well, my, my time in the Air Force was really a tremendous learning experience for me. Uh, my job, uh, telecommunication systems control or tech control for short, was a job that seemed to be made specifically for me. Tech controllers were responsible for the design and operations of the Department of Defense communications networks globally. and we worked with all sorts of networks from telephone and microwave to tropo scatter and satellite. And the most valuable skill that I learned, I think, was logical troubleshooting and fault isolation. Uh, that's the foundation for pretty much everything that I do today. Uh, those skills still serve me very well to this day when I go and design a system based on uh, whatever the customer needs. And of course, in order to excel at at uh, fault isolation or designing a solution, you first have to understand how all the pieces work. Yeah, you really can't underestimate troubleshooting, can you, in in, in some degree, especially in this industry when it's working through workflows. Absolutely. Uh, trying to find the ideal solution for, for a customer. Uh, sometimes all it needs is, is good problem-solving skills, isn't it? It's, you know, working through it, seeing what works, seeing what sticks. Absolutely. And as we're talking about workflows and, and, and projects and things, Matt, you, you know, you've been involved in so many exciting projects throughout your career, you know, with various positions. Is there kind of one project that, that you help to plan or integrate that really sticks out as a whole lot for you? It doesn't have to be one of these massive projects. It can be a small one. But, but you know, what, what really sticks out to you? Probably... The, the best job or the best project that I've had so far in my career was assisting in the design and then managing the build out of Zuku TV in Kenya. Uh, Zuku TV was a 130 channel direct to home satellite platform serving all of sub-Saharan Africa. And it also has an IPTV deployment on Zuku fiber across Kenya and Tanzania. Uh, and so it started out as a muddy field beside Zuku's headquarters on the outskirts of Nairobi. Uh, rapidly, it became a teleport with some 25 satellite antennas, including two 9.3 meter uplink antennas. Uh, the head end that uh, I also uh, managed the, the project build is located in the city center 
and is connected to the teleport by a fully redundant fiber ring. I found that experience incredibly rewarding on a lot of different levels, working with the different subsystems, integrating things like the uh, SMS and the, the billing system and uh, the conditional access system, bringing them all together to really build a modern direct home satellite service where there wasn't one before. Yeah, no, what a fantastic achievement, Matt. Um, and, and throughout your career, you've, I'm guessing you've probably seen hundreds or maybe even thousands of, of different workflows and, and, you know, different ways of doing things for TV channels across the world. How, how have you seen workflows change in more recent years generally? Do, do you think they're getting more simplified, more complicated? You know, is it for the better or the worse? How have you been seeing workflows change as, as of late? What I've seen is the con- consolidation of workflows over the years. Uh, broadcast systems have evolved uh, over the years to require less and less moving parts and are becoming more and more powerful at the same time. Uh, the problem is, is that with less moving parts also come smaller staffs. That can be a, a problem or that can be a good thing, depending on which side of the equation you're, you're sitting on. Uh, what used to require a whole room full of people to orchestrate a, a news program 10 years ago now, now it really only requires a small handful of people to, to orchestrate, and it actually comes out as a better, more polished program today than it did 10 to 15 years ago. So the thing that I'm noticing about workflows is that they're really getting consolidated. Um, one customer, as an example, launched a, a channel with a staff of just five people on a channel in the box solution. and you know, they were great. The, the output product was very, very polished. It looked very slick. And in fact, we're working with a couple of customers today looking for a similar solution, but for ad insertion with, with Playbox. Yes, yeah. And, and yeah, would you say it's kind of, you know, now is the time to, if you're thinking of, of starting a TV channel or getting something set up, do you think now is, is that perfect time then in, in terms of, you know, not having to invest as much capital, um, you know, ha- being able to have a smaller team of engineers. Do, do you think now is that time? Absolutely. Um, I think the the costs of of deploying channel in a box solutions uh, or you know whichever solution you decide, the costs have significantly decreased over the last few years. Um, so if, if you want to launch a linear channel, now's the time to do it. I think. Yeah. And of course I asked that question without even considering COVID and the impact on, on people there. So, um, so yeah, talking about COVID pre COVID, um, I noticed a lot of your time was spent obviously traveling and holding positions in different countries, um, and being based in many different continents. So I just wanted to ask on a personal level, what has this past year been like for you not being able to travel and, and, and meet customers and colleagues face to face? Well, Neil, I have got to say that this is the longest period of time that I've not been on an airplane in my entire adult life. I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last time for me was coming home from Christmas in early January, 2020. Yeah. Uh, the problem is, is that my position here at Benchmark uh, requires me to work several different hats. And of course, one of those is sales. And for me, the most effective way to handle sales, as in most industries, is with face-to-face meetings, whether it's in a client's office, uh, having a meal in a restaurant someplace, or even a beer after work hours. Uh, The COVID situation has really caused not just our industry, but industry in general, uh, they really caused it's really caused them to rethink the way that they conduct business. Uh, I think that conducting many functions, especially sales, is, it's just difficult remotely because you know, you're not able to see the visual cues as easily on the person sitting across the, or who would be sitting across the table from you. Now they're sitting at home on their computer. Yes. Um, it's, it, it's definitely a lot harder to, to interface with people now than it was you know, 18 months ago. Yeah. So I, I, I bet you're itching to get on a flight then as soon as possible. But Absolutely. Yeah, on this flip side, I, I kind of joined Playbox a year ago whilst COVID was ongoing. So all I've known really is the Zoom calls and, uh, you know, I've seen everything about trade shows and, and how successful those used to be. Um, 
so it will almost be a learning curve getting to face to face but i agree there's so much value there um you know in in, in being face to face with customers not having to arrange time zones on zoom calls like we're doing today and, and all sorts just being in the same location as someone it's it's you know you can't underestimate that can you absolutely it's, it's really hard to build a rapport with somebody that you've just met over a zoom call <laughs> yeah. you know, it, it, it's I, i'm not quite sure that i know how to put it properly but you know there's just something about sitting in somebody's office or sitting across the table that it, it's easier to connect no i completely agree um and we, we did touch on trade shows a little bit there how are you approaching trade shows this year you know will benchmark be exhibiting or, or we will you be attending in a kind of more personal capacity well in my opinion trade shows are really critical events in this industry um, it's not just about making sales, but it's also about staying connected with this industry, which, as you probably know, is very dynamic. Things are changing constantly. Um, this year, we really didn't have much of a choice. Uh, with Asia going through wave after wave of lockdowns, we don't have any choice but to attend trade shows virtually. Uh, you know, for example, we just had TradeX that had encompasses Broadcast Asia and Communication. And we all participated in it virtually, but doing the virtual thing, really it's, it's just attending meetings, you know, Zoom meetings and what essentially turn into webinars. And I think people are so burned out on webinars and doing virtual meetings and things like that. You know, I've noticed recently in, in meetings that I've had with various customers, everybody turns their cameras off because they're just, they're they're tired of it. Um, it. It's it's really impossible to get anywhere as near the same experience of walking a trade show floor virtually uh, with the technology that's available today. In the future, yeah, sure. You know, augmented reality and virtual reality will will you know enable things like that. But for the the near term, you you just can't trade that experience for anything yeah and and fingers crossed you guys get to go something to something physical very soon then um i can tell you you guys really really do value that kind of environment absolutely <clears throat> and then matt this is a question we ask at the end of every podcast um and it's just in one word if you could explain it in one word and one word only what do you envision for the future of the broadcasting industry change the paradigm of broadcasters was already it was already beginning to change before COVID. Um, before there was a, a trend towards OTT and VOD on any device, but COVID has really accelerated that trend now. Um, you know, take, for example, the announcements from various uh, companies like Disney, where they're shutting down their linear channels, um, at least in Asia, and shifting everything over to their OTT platform. Um, even companies like CNN have announced CNN Plus, and I'm sure that within a year or two, there's probably not going to be a CNN linear channel anymore. Uh, there is a place for linear TV, but that's changing. Yeah, 100%. And, and it, it's, it's crazy how we've seen it in COVID. Like you said, uh, you know, linear channels shutting down, um, OTT and on demand absolutely, absolutely rocketing in, in popularity. Um, you know, households hold in way more than, than two, three, four OTT subscriptions at one time as well. Um, you know, we're, we're just keeping an eye on that and, and seeing how that progresses. Um, so obviously, Matt, thank you for joining us today and answering some of those questions that we had for you. Are there any exciting plans in the pipeline for you or, or Benchmark that you can talk to us about today? Benchmark is, is expanding our efforts beyond traditional broadcast systems integration. Um, there's lots of new technologies that that we're bringing out um, things like cloud services and 5G. Uh, you know, we've, we've got some pretty exciting developments that are gonna be coming up on that later on this year. And OTT is also gonna play a significant role uh, in our future as well as it did in 2020. Uh, in 2020, we launched three different OTT platforms across South Asia and looking forward to more in 2021 and 2022. Yeah. 
Well, really excited to see what you guys get up to. And how can people get in touch with you guys if they want to inquire about anything? Sure, absolutely. Um, anybody can reach us through our website at benchmarkbroadcast.com. And you can reach me directly at Matt, M-A-T-T dot Ash, A-S-H-E, at benchmarkbroadcast.com. Lovely and simple. That's how we like it. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll link to, off to the website in the podcast description. So anyone on Spotify uh, or Apple Podcasts, you, you can find the link there. Uh, so, yeah, once again, thank you very much, Matt, for, for taking the time out today. Um, really do appreciate it. No problem. My pleasure. Thank you for having me on. No problem, Matt. Thank you.